Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are going to be assembling and flying a like space station, orbital colony, epic launcher, interplanetary, what can we do to add things. So uh, yeah, it's been pretty awesome. I'm really happy with this thing. This thing is, uh, I've been wanting to do something like this for a while in KSP and I finally got around to doing it. So uh, now we are launching, uh, right now is the first of three launches. This is going to be the uh, main actual space station core. Um, which is uh, looking very weird inside that payload um, right now. We have uh, eight F1 engines or eight Mastodon engines firing. Um, once that stage depletes, we can stage it away and get our Rhino stage activated. Now we are going to sit here for a long time while we uh, while we try and get ourselves into orbit, and then eventually we'll pop open the fairing here in a little bit, and you'll be able to see the uh, to the main core of the space station. So. Uh, there it is, as you can see. So the uh, the station is going to be launched in three parts, or technically it really is only one part. So uh, the station has, yeah, so the first launch is going to be this um, this main space station. This is where the crew are, basically. The second launch is we're going to be launching the giant fuel tank slash interplanetary tug, which also doubles as a refueling device. You'll see when you get, when we, uh, when we take it out to, uh, when we take it interplanetary, right? We go on a little bit of a voyage with this thing that kind of, kind of show off its, its abilities, right? So... Uh, yeah, so that's the second launch, and then the third launch is going to be the landers, which are actually going to do the landing, because that thing, obviously, this thing cannot, cannot land. Um, yeah, so this thing is supposed to serve as a, like, a headquarters, a orbital, colony, kind of a space station thing that can fly around and go wherever it wants. It's like, it's like a mobile space station, is what I would call it. It's like, it's like, you know... You know, I don't know. I think that's a good way of describing it. It needs a name. Maybe we can give a name for it. Maybe with the, you know, it's a cool name. Maybe we could call it like the, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, so here is the station. So I'll, I'll give you guys a little bit of, a, I guess, a, an informal tour of the station, I guess. I'm just going to walk through what um, what is where, basically. So um, so we have the solar arrays that we're deploying right now. They're just the big old, the big old solar panels that we have coming out right now. They're kind of big and huge and stuff well um, the reason i have a lot of solar panels is the solar panels is really our main way of uh, power generation and uh you know sometimes they go out to pretty far places like jewel and stuff when you need them um just ahead of that is the radiators and then there's like that mid big core area which i kind of say is the normal crew area at the front and then there's some docking area on the bottom side there's a front and aft docking um areas then on the top back is our little science module we have a bunch of science equipment and yeah, that's the, basically the whole station. You'll see it a little bit more in the future, but now it's time to crossfade over to the, the second launch. There's actually, um, right below the science module, there is these two little observation modules, which you'll see get, we'll, we'll use them and you, you'll see. There's something pretty cool you can do with them, or pretty pretty cool you can see with them, I should say. So, um, yeah, we have now launched the second module, which is going to be the big interplanetary tug slash fuel thing. Um, which also doubles as a refueler. So yeah, like I said, you'll have to. You'll, this thing weird. So this thing, you'll you'll see. I don't want to don't want to spoil it, right? This thing is it's ridiculous. So uh, either way, we're coming in now. We don't actually have to put this thing in a fairing because it's, it's fairly aerodynamically shaped. I just put a nose cone on the top docking port. So we'll decouple that when we get into orbit, um, and then we'll be able to dock this thing up. So there you go. We've staged away our bottom stage, and now we are once again taking absolute ages to get ourselves into uh, into an orbit. But hey, that's life, you know. Low power, t low TWR. I mean, these, these all, all these are over 100 tons, all these modules. Like, I believe the first one was 140 tons. This one is 170 tons. Actually, the third one's only 40 tons just because the landers, you know, they're, they're pretty darn small. Um, yeah, so this thing carries a bunch of liquid fuel. Um, when it's stocked up to the station, it gives us about 4,500 meters a second of delta V. Um, that's obviously not a lot, like, in... And if you think like this is a you know a mobile interplanetary whatever thing, you think it can go oh it can go everywhere. This thing can go everywhere actually because it can refuel itself um, at every destination. It can actually refuel itself. It can't refuel itself everywhere. It can't refuel itself uh, at Tylo, Lath, or uh, Duna, or Eve, or Kerbin, basically. Um, basically, places with an atmosphere and Tylo, it can't refuel that. So I guess you gotta plan our fuel kind of accordingly if you ever want to go to those places. Um, yeah, because uh, you'll see. Well, I'll, I do a refueling. You'll, I do the whole shebang, right? I, I'm really kind of teasing this, aren't I? So now we're gonna do our rendezvous. And I try to cut out a lot here because this video is, you know, fairly long already, and most of it's really sped up. There's a lot we have to get done in this video to get everything docked together, and then we have to go take it down a little bit of a trip. So, um, if you're enjoying the video, uh, you know, there's a subscribe button. I, I have just. Uh, it's the third of the uh, the year, so January third when I started when I'm recording this or making this video. So, uh, I've made the goal to hit to hit. 
6,000 subscribers by the uh, by the end of the month. Um, we'll see how that works. You know, you never know. If you like it, you can help reach the goal, right? I don't know. Or comment or join the Discord. Oh my gosh, guys. Um, I really want to... I'm really trying here. I'm, I'm the pretty ambitious goal here. So my Discord's at about 850 people as of recording this video. Oh, look at this docking view. This view is pretty cool, guys. I'll, I'll stop my plugs here for a second to see this docking. See, this is a looking out the back of the science module, and you can see uh, that's pretty cool. And there's the docking. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and then we can go ahead and crossfade over to the um, crossfade over to the final launch, which is the lanyards, which has another dumb looking fairing. And this looks like kind of like an Ares one, if you don't know if you know what that rocket is. It has like a has a Clydesdale bottom stage, and then and with def fuel, but then just a liquid fueled upper stage. Uh, yeah, so we can get ready to do this thing does not go very fast and then we can get it get it get it in orbit um, Like I was saying uh, pretty ambitious goal here for the discord. Um, we're at 50 people um, I want to try and beat I want I want to try and get more people in our discord uh, Than strats and blitz does and he has about 1300 so if you're watching strats and blitz, I, I'm I'm coming for you <laughs> I don't know unless if, if you got you know if you guys want to use it or a subscriber like oh my gosh guys Oh my gosh all right, anyway. Hi guys, so that's gonna be it for the plug. So let's let's hope we can get our goals. I have a lot of goals. Let's see if it works out. Cause in December I got 2,000 subs, so I think in January maybe we could try and get 3,000 subs. You know, like 3,000 gain, gain 2,000 in December. So yeah, hopefully that pans out. Uh, now we are again taking absolutely forever to get into orbit with this upper stage. I've sped this up to eight times speed now. And there you go. We can stay. Get rid of the fairing. You can see we have two landers here. We have one lander. So this thing, like I said, it can go everywhere except. Uh, Tylo, Duna, and uh, Tylo. No, it can't go to Tylo. Tylo and uh, no, just Tylo and Eve are the only two places um, that they physically can't go. But there are many a docking ports on this thing, so there there room for there's plenty of room to add more landers and stuff. Um, these are just the two landers I launched initially with it. So yeah, so the plane is obviously a plane. Um, that this one is mainly meant to go to Lath and stuff. It it could maybe do Duna. Um, it probably wouldn't even need to because this lander right here it, it can easily do Duna um, this lander has all sorts of Delta V it can land literally anywhere um, except Lathe, Eve uh, and uh, Tylo so uh, that's pretty cool and then this plane is just mainly our Lathe lander so we're gonna get the two docked up um, so starting with the plane um, unfortunately I did forget to put a small docking port on the thing which is what I have on the uh, on the plane so we're gonna have to kind of use our advanced grabbing unit I knew that thing would come in uh, handy uh, at some point and and it did so we're gonna dock it up to the um the forward docking module or docking adapter area and that's gonna be uh, right by the front of the craft on the bottom side of it by the communications area so we're gonna move this one and this one is going to dock up to the um top community uh, top docking adapter area there's only one docking port up here uh, I just uh, a big reason it is for weight balancing reasons because our center mass is gonna get really low if we have the that plane down there um, and another reason is you guys are about to see here in a second when I, I'm going to switch the camera over to one of those observation modules. And you're going to see how epic this view is uh, when it comes in. So if you don't know what the observation modules are, they're right next to the science module. Uh, you can see them. They're, they're those two little extendy things with the Mark II lander cans. So you'll see here in a second, I will, um, I'm will i going to go to the inside view and I'm going to just switch on over to, there it is. Look at that. That's pretty epic. I, 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 I think that deserves a uh, subscribe. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but look look at that that is just awesome i really that's one of my favorite views just ever in all of ksp i uh, i i'm i'm me big fan i am a big fan i don't know what's with the italian accent uh yeah i like that that's good stuff good stuff here it comes coming in that's so cool i'm gonna shut up now for a second boom that's pretty epic. All right, now let's get ready to go on to our interplanetary journey. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna have to split up our ejection burn into two burns because we are going out to uh, the Julian system today. Yep, going out to the Julian system. So we, uh, because of the, how the center mass is set up, we actually have to turn off one of the nuclear engines. So we're only gonna be firing uh, eight of the nine uh, during the uh, during our two burns just because of how, yeah, how the weight is distributed. So um, yeah, that, that's, that's a fun fact. And where are we going? Where may you ask? Because Julian system. Um, we, we can't go to Tylo because of a uh, thrust, because, uh, yeah, we just can't. And we can't refuel at Tylo, so. Um, we have two options, and we can't refuel at Lathe. So, Lathe isn't really an option, so we are going to either go to Pole, uh, Val, or Bop. And, uh, well, we're going to Val. Um, so, yeah. 
Now, I'm going to leave it in orbit around Val at the end of this video, and I'm going to leave it for future videos, right? Right? Because it can go anywhere, right? So I know if some of you guys are probably wanting me to go to Lathe, but you can't refuel at Lathe, so Val was really the best option in the Julian system. So I, I, uh, we go out here, then we go to, <coughs> oh, I just coffered. Oh my gosh, guys, I have the, I have the thingy, the, the demonetizable thingy. Oh my gosh. Um, here we go. Uh, yeah, so it, it basically I think Val gave us the best options. But here we are coming in for a Tylo Gravity Assist, a very, very low Tylo Gravity Assist. And we can go to the Observation Module and we can see how low we got. We, we got like, uh, we have, it was like 8 kilometers with our peri app, so... That uh, nice little fuel saving maneuver we did right there, and then we can um, get ourselves uh, into a uh, do a little bit of retrograde burn around uh, around Jewel, and we can get ourselves onto uh, an encounter with or a potential encounter with Val. So yeah, in the future. So what I plan on doing this thing, this would be really cool. Is like if any future videos if I'm going to interplanetary places. And I'm like, oh, we're gonna go explore Lathe for time. You know, we can we can send out a mothership, and then we can, you know, like we can bring this thing, the space station, out to Lathe orbit. Like, oh my gosh, guys, we have a space station now. Like, look at that. And then we can dock the mothership, and then the lander can go do its thing, and Kerbal's gonna hang out there for a while, and come back. Yeah, I think that'd be so cool. Then maybe another time we're doing a Duna mission, and then hey, look, the space station's there now. Like, wouldn't that be epic? And it could serve as like a, you know, like a, you know, little place for the Kerbals to hang out if they're ever on a long mission. They can just like. They're going to Duna for a while. They can go to Duna, and the space station can show up, and they have like a nice little house for a while. So I just uh, talked through the interesting things. So we have now decoupled um, that um, that fuel module, um, and uh, yeah. So this is what I was talking about. This thing is going to be actually this thing is actually a lander. So it's going to literally land itself, refuel itself, and then re-rendezvous, and then that's how we're going to get ourselves refueled. It's not perfectly efficient, obviously, because we have to spend a lot of fuel um, landing and taking off and stuff. And um, here's a little montage of all my crashes, because as you can see, this thing is not exactly very conducive to a landing. You have to land a pretty flat area. So this thing loved loved to tip over. So yay, tipping, more tipping, boom, yay, even more explosions. And it uh, looks like this one we got it, because, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know if you guys saw, but I installed Kerbal Engineer um, during the filming. I've filmed this over two days, and uh, I decided it might be a day to get Kerbal Engineer installed. I also installed Vessel Mover and Hybrid and some other mods and stuff. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I've been doing stuff on multiplayer, and I had to mess with my mods, and now it's back. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys noticed the Kerbal Engineer stuff suddenly pop up midway through this video, but, yeah, they did. So now we, can, uh, we are now landed. We can get our drills extended, and, yeah. So this is really not an efficient way to do things because we burn a lot of fuel taking off. Um, a lot of the fuel we gained to, you know, that we're, you know, the, a lot of fuel that we mined, we have to just get rid of to trying to get into orbit. But I feel like that was easier than having like a dedicated refueling lander because that's also not efficient because you're still burning the fuel to get up with the lander, right? So, I mean, even if we, even if we perfectly refill this main module thing here, um, there's, the lander is going to weigh so much fuel, way so much. I, I figured it'd be easier to do it this way, and this way is cooler too. So now we can go back to the station. Now we can take the lander uh, out for a spin or a land. Um, this is going to be the ones with the Kerbals in it. So they're going to go explore the area or explore Val for a little bit. Um, yeah, um, we're on a pretty elliptical orbit. Um, we just did that so we could save fuel in the uh, nuclear stage for landing. Because if we, if we uh, went into a perfectly circular orbit, the... Um, nuclear tug thingy would not have actually had enough fuel to land so yeah so bringing the lander in for a nice little landing um i forgot to set up my decouplers right so that decoupler has to just hang out there for the whole time that's not eh. hey i don't know maybe it's like an engine skirt or something but uh, here we go coming in on a very steep area kind of hit the ground pretty hard there but uh anyway we have we have made it amazing landing as always good job kerbals uh then get ready to get something some guy ev8 and then we uh then we can head back to uh, then we head back to orbit um, eventually, and we're gonna have, and while while we're doing this, the uh, the obviously the other uh, the interplanetary tug is refueling itself. So yeah, and here you go, falling out Kerbal style seems about right, and then um, then we can get ourselves back up, and we can go and plant a flag on Val after a little bit more ex running into stuff and not falling over and all that kind of fun stuff. There we can go and plant the um, we can plant the um, the soup. Area Russian flag, yeah, that tipped over. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's an inferior flag. <laughs> uh, who doesn't love Soviet flags, right? <laughs> so uh, now we can cross right over to the um, 
the tuggy thing here, tuggy. That was a weird way of saying it, but uh, looks like it's just about refilled, and now we can uh, get ready to uh, just about uh, retract the the the, um, the drills, and we can go ahead and meet up with the uh, with the station in orbit, and then we can rendezvous with it. So yeah, it's a good good plan, isn't it? So I'm gonna go wait a few orbits so we can get our orbits to kind of line up, and there we go. And now we can fire up the engines and. This thing is not moving, is it? It is going really slow. Um, yeah, that's the def. This is why we also we can't <laughs> go to places like Tylo or Lathe or Duna. They would not, not be able to take off. Val is the biggest place it can refuel at. So I guess that's another reason we got to Val. We showed, we, we pushed this thing to its limits, right? I mean, like Val is the biggest, um, the second biggest non-atmospheric uh, location, right? Um, yeah, it's bigger than Mundrez, Elu, it's bigger than all those places, so that's pretty cool. Not bigger than Tylo, though, obviously. So now we're going to crossfade to our Rondes Vuis as we come in for a nice little, nice little docking here. Um, so we did, you can see liquid fuel gauges, they were, we did burn quite a bit of fuel during our takeoff. We, st we still have enough to, uh, we can get anywhere in the Julian system. Um, we can get back to Kerbin, or we can get back into a Kerbin orbit. We can, you'll see in the Delta V, we can, we can get most places. Um, we probably couldn't get to somewhere like Moho. We'd have to probably either take a stop somewhere, like stop at like maybe Kerbin and refuel, or stop at um, you know Gilly or something. You, you'd have to stop somewhere, um, or you could just use gravity assists and make your way there. So yeah, this thing could basically go anywhere, right? You just have to be careful because you don't want to be going to too many places you can't refuel at once. So like if you go to Lathe and then you go to Duna and then you go to Eve, you know, you're gonna you're gonna start to run out of fuel, right? Um, even yeah so you need to go to places you can refuel that so there is the docking completed and uh, there we can go to the lander so um i didn't show this on screen but i did lower the orbit of the uh, of the, the station with the nuclears once i um redocked um just so the uh, lander can actually have enough fuel to be able to to redock because uh, we, it, the lander would have been really tricky it would have been really tricky to get the lander to uh, rendezvous in that elliptical of an orbit a little it's a little bit a little bit too much energy to uh for that the little lander camp it's not a very big lander um so yeah we can now go ahead and um, uh, the, the lander can actually land on doing it and come back um, because we have um, on, we have some cargo that we brought on board like from the new 1.11 stuff um, we brought on board a um, um, some parachutes so we can do it with the new EVA construction mode is we can get those parachutes and we can attach them to the lander um, when it's doing a Duna mission so they're just hanging out on the station now and then when when it comes time for a, a land you know for for a Duna for a trip down to Duna we can just you know throw the parachutes out and then when it comes back we take the parachutes off i think that's pretty epic 1.11 was a great update wasn't it so um now we can come in for our for our, our final docking of the video as it kind of swivels around the port not really having a good time here and then eventually it uh eventually it comes together there it goes all right so that's gonna that's gonna bring us to the end of today's video hope you enjoyed hope you hope that was worthy of a subscription i don't know we'll see um well, that's gonna be it so i'd like to uh thank you all for watching See you next time. Please, uh, think, uh, resort comment to the video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.